The events of the 6th of August 1945 reshaped human history. A weapon capable of destroying all life on Earth had been unleashed on a city of 350,000 people. 90,000 people were killed instantly by this weapon, and another 90,000 condemned to a slow and lingering death as a result of radiation exposure. This city was Hiroshima, and in June of 2015 I had the privilege of visiting this incredible city. And so as to mark the 70th anniversary of the atomic bombings, I would like to share with you my experiences of it. Approaching Hiroshima, I felt a lump forming in my throat. More people were killed in a single instant at the hands of other men here than at any other time in history. The little boy bomb itself harnessed the fundamental power of the universe to unleash destruction on an unimaginable scale, with its radioactive emissions condemning future generations to a life of suffering. Despite the entire city being reduced to rubble, the wounds of August 6th, 1945 have mostly healed. There is relatively little indication of what happened in Hiroshima on the day, unless you were to visit the Peace Memorial Park. It sits at a fork in the Ota River, this point being the target for the Enola Gay aircrew, and it is here that Hiroshima's most iconic landmark stands, the Atomic Bomb Dome. Originally a commercial exhibition centre, the structure is now a monument to the day. This undisturbed relic of the bomb, surrounded by its own rubble, is a more poignant reminder of what happened here than any sculpture or statue could ever be. The lacerated concrete walls and skeletal steel pinnacle of the building forms the focal point of the memorial park, sitting in direct line of sight of the victim's cenotaph. The main memorial cenotaph lies at the opposite side of the peace memorial to the dome. The arch shape of the cenotaph is said to represent the shelter for the souls of those lost in the bombing. Beyond the main arch, an eternal peace flame burns above a reflecting pool. This ensures all victims of the bombing are never forgotten. Given the nature of what happened in Hiroshima, it is unsurprising that the idea of a world at peace forms the very core of its DNA. Visitors are invited to ring the Bell of Peace, a symbol of Hiroshima's aspiration, and a call for a world free of nuclear weapons. After being struck, the bell resonates for a very long time so as to ring in all corners of the earth. Children who were victims of the bomb are also remembered. A monument that shows a child holding a paper crane commemorates the youngsters who died. This particular monument was created with one young girl, Sadako Sasaki, in mind. At the age of two, Sadako was only one mile from the bomb when it exploded. Her body was exposed to large doses of radiation which resulted in her developing leukemia by the age of 12. While she was ill, she heard about the ancient Japanese legend of Senbazuru, which promises that anyone who folds 1,000 origami cranes will be granted a wish. Sadako attempted this in hope that she'd be cured of her leukemia. However, she only managed to fold 644 paper cranes before she died. She was buried with a thousand cranes, her friends having completed them for her. In memory of her and the other children who died, thousands of origami cranes from around the world are displayed at the monument, so as they not be forgotten. Seventy years later the dome is just as haunting as it was in the immediate aftermath, when it was the closest structure to the atomic bomb hypercenter that remained standing. Hiroshima is a city that all people who have the opportunity to visit should visit. As Japan and the world marks the 70th anniversary of the atomic bomb, and as the number of survivors dwindles, we must remind ourselves of the immeasurable cost the use of nuclear weapons could have if they were to be used again. Hiroshima's Peace Memorial is a permanent reminder of this, and as I say, I encourage you all to visit if you have the chance. Thank you for watching.